Satyabama Institute of Science and Technology. Good morning. My name is Mabel Nirmala Joseph from the Department of Computer Science and Engineering, Satyabama Institute of Science and Technology. The topic for today's session is C Programming Basics. So, I will be covering the introduction of C Programming Language. So, as we all know, the purpose of any language is to communicate between two parties. So, two people who intend to communicate with each other use a language that is known by both persons. So, if the two people involved in communication know English, they can easily communicate using English language. If one person says hi, the other person because he understands the language, he responds by saying hello. If two people communicate in Tamil, in this case the teacher on the left hand side is saying Kalai Vanakkam which means good morning. The students respond by saying Vanakkam Ayya. And if two people want to communicate in Hindi, when the speaker says Namaste, the student understands it and responds by saying Namaste Mahoday, meaning good morning sir. But if the person talks in a language which is unknown to the receiver, then he will not know what to respond. So, he will be puzzled. So, we need a person in between, a mediator, a middle person to interpret. So, his job is to interpret what the speaker is telling and translate it to the other person. So, he will be acting as a mediator. So, the mediator will translate it into hi and the responder will respond because he understands it and says hello. So, now we need to communicate with the computer to solve problems. Why? Because problems simple like this, like calculating the factorial of 5 is very simple. So, we can calculate using our human brain by doing 5 into 4 into 3 into 2 into 1 which is 120. But if there is a case where we have to find out the factorial of the number 120, then it is a tedious and boring task for us to do because we have to do, we have to compute 120 into 119 into 119 and so on till 1. So, we need a machine to solve complex problems. So, that is the need to communicate with the computer. So, we need to give instructions to the computer to solve complex problems. So, whenever we use a language, we have to use proper grammar of the language to communicate because that will lead to efficient communication which will not lead to any misinterpretation or misunderstanding. Like we have uh, English grammar or any lang language has its own grammar, we also have grammar for programming languages which is called syntax. So, all programming languages have their own syntax. So, when a programmer has to write a program in C programming language, he has to learn the grammar of that C programming language which is called the syntax of that programming language. So, if I have to code in C, I have to learn the syntax of C programming language. If I, have, if I have to code in Java, I need to learn the syntax of Java and so on for all high level programming languages. So, C, C++, Java, Python are all categorized as high level programming language which have syntax of their own. So, we need to write a program by following the rules of the language. The rules of the language is called the grammar or the syntax. So, the program that we write is called the source code. Now, the source code is not understood by the machine as such because the machine understands only zeros and ones. So, we are writing a program in high level programming language and we try to give that instruction to the computer, but the computer is not able to understand it because it understands only zeros and ones. So, we need an interpreter in between, okay, whose job is to translate this high level programming language into low level programming language or machine level language. So, we call that interpreter for programming languages as compiler. The compiler's job is not only translating the high level programming languages into zeros and ones, but it also helps us resolve compilation errors. What is a compilation error? And a compilation error is a grammatical mistake, a syntactical error found in the program. So, if you are writing an incorrect program not following the syntax of the programming language, it will be prompted, the compiler will prompt you 
to correct those errors only after feeding a correct program without any syntactical errors the compiler will be able to convert that into a machine level language that is into zeros and ones so that is the job of a compiler so all programming languages can be categorized into these paradigms monolithic programming procedural programming structural pro structured programming and object oriented programming in this c programming comes under structured programming language so if you look at the history of c language it was developed by dennis ritchie along with his friend ken thompson in the year 1972 so it evolved from a programming language called bcpl earlier called as b language bcpl stands for basic combined programming language so c predominantly took the syntax from bcpl and c was named eventually after b as c so c is a structured language which allows a variety of program into small modules so it is easy for us to debug and test the program when it is in smaller modules c programming language is used in various applications to develop database systems language interpreters compilers and assemblers operating systems network drivers and word processors so these are the various uses and application of c programming language c comes with a rich set of inbuilt functions so that's why it's called robust and c programs are very efficient and fast in execution they are highly portable and it also comes with a rich set of c library functions we can create our own functions and create new c libraries and c is easily extensible so next is tokens in c so as every language spoken language is made up of alphabets words and sentences c language is made up of tokens so when we learn a new language example english language when it is taught to us first we learn the alphabet set then after learning the alphabet set we learn the set of words words are made up of alphabets and words make sentences set of words make sentences so we have to frame sentences meaningfully following the grammar of the language so same way in c we have something called tokens a token is defined as the smallest individual element in c so there are six categories of tokens keywords identifiers constants state strings special symbols and operators so using these tokens we make up a sentence in c language terminated by semicolon so we have to follow the syntax and use these tokens and create statements in the c programming language so i'd like to explain the structure of the c program using the simple program here we just display hello world on the screen using this program so this structure starts with the documentation section where the author of the program or the writer of the program explains the details or the explains the program in words english language without using the syntax of the c language so this section will be ignored by the compiler the compiler will not translate this into zeros and ones which is enclosed within slash star star slash so this section is called documentation section which is purely for the benefit of the person who is developing the program and the person who wants to understand the developed program next section is called the pre processor statement which begins with hash so this is done or executed before the compilation process what is the compilation process converting the program source code into zeros and ones before this translation happens the pre processor part will be executed that's why it's called pre processor then the control begins from the main function and the body of the main function is enclosed within a pair of curly braces line by line the statements inside this section will be executed one after the other each statement will be terminated by a semicolon in c language printf is a function that is used to print stuff on the screen so whatever is enclosed within the double quotes will be printed as it is so hello world will be printed with the exclamatory mark but slash n will not be printed so we will discuss about slash n which is called escape sequence we learn the meaning of that in the later slide so the compilation process involves three steps pre processing that is executing the pre processor directives that begin with hash then the compilation happens which that is translating the correct source code into machine language 
then the linking process which handles merging and making executable file. So the C program is fed when the pre-process section is executed, the program is expanded, the source code is expanded along with the header files and the compilation is done. So this is how the program is translated into machine language. Now I'll take another small program where we are declaring a variable and displaying the content of the variable using something called as format specifier. In this program, there is a printf statement with something called percentage %d. So percentage %d refers to the format of the data. So format specifier is a string used in the formatted input and output function. So printf is a formatted input and output function. The format string determines the format or the type of the input data. So here I have declared a variable called b is equal to 6 which means there is a memory allotted for storing 6. The value I am going to store is 6 and that memory is called b and the type that the data type or the type of data 6 is is integer. So that is the meaning of this statement. So when I want to print b, the content of b, how, will, how I will print, print is I have to use value of b is percentage %d. So in the print statement output, percentage %d will be replaced by the value of the variable b. So that is about format specifier. As I told you previously about slash n, which is called the escape sequence. Slash n means new line and why it is called escape sequence is in the printf statement, whenever I use slash n, slash n will not be printed on the monitor, but it will take the content, forthcoming content to the new line. So it will escape in the print statement, but its meaning will be interpreted in displaying the output of the program or the printf statement. So today we learned what is C programming language, what are the basics of C programming language including the tokens, the basic C programming structure, format specifier and escape sequence. Thank you.